Hi Neil, thank you so much for giving up some of your time today to attend this interview. Why don't you kick things off by telling us a little bit about your work history and the things that you were doing before becoming an easy business partner? Yeah, well, most of my career has been spent in the telecoms industry. I um, I got into it back in about 1994, spent eight years with a really fast-growing American uh, telecoms company, um, MCI Worldcom, which was was great fun. Um, but but industries change; these things uh, came to an end. Worldcom, uh, most people know of Enron and their uh, you know accounting practices, and uh, Worldcom were just as bad, in fact, possibly worse. Uh, I ended up leaving there in uh, 2000, end of 2002, and uh, I set up my first business, which was um, effectively a franchise. It was a, I was a BT partner. Uh, they were setting up what they called the BT Local Business Channel, where they outsourced all the sales to SMEs. So that was my first experience of, of running a business. Did that for about 11 years. It was great at the start, and then um, margins got squeezed, and things changed. And I had lots of staff, and uh, you know all the overheads and the, uh, the you know the things that go with that. And um, I decided I had enough. I decided to go in a different direction. Stayed within telecoms for a while. Um, did a little bit of consultancy work with various companies, and then one day I had this harebrained idea for for a mobile app. So I uh, I found uh, I found a company in Leeds, and it's a company that I still speak to today. And I went and saw them and they quoted me a hundred thousand pounds. And uh, obviously I didn't have a hundred thousand pounds or not a hundred thousand pounds to spend on a, a harebrained idea, which they told me it was, um, but they came up with some great ideas for me. Um, but that was the start of, uh, I suppose, me thinking there's an opportunity here and, and how could I address that opportunity, you, you know, without spending hundreds of thousands of pounds. Um and, and I was ready for a change and, uh, you know, I was looking for something different, exciting, that wasn't telecoms based. And, and that's when I saw the, the, the easy, the easy apps franchise and, um, you know, and, and the rest is history. I went and met Zach, saw, saw what the, uh, the, the possibilities were and, and I signed up pretty much there and then. Awesome. It's really interesting to get some insight into your background. It sounds like part of your decision to join Easy Apps was about recognising uh, the issue that mobile apps have usually been costly for businesses to get. And you've also come into this business with a lot of transferable skills, I would imagine. I, um, I'd run a business, so I'd gone through the pain of, um, you know, working for somebody, coming out of that, trying to understand you know, cash flow and forecasting and, you know, and you really understanding the, the needs of running a business. Um, and yeah, so so those skills were completely transferable. I'd, I'd been in a sales background, so I, I knew how to sell, although it wasn't perhaps my, my, my greatest skill. Um, and I just wanted something, something interesting that, um, you know, was fun and new. And, uh, and that's what I, that's what I found. And how did Easy Business help you launch your new business and overcome some of those challenges that people face when starting something new? Easy Business were great right from the start. Uh, the The reason I was looking for a franchise was because, you know, you, you've you've got a lot of the things you need when you start a business. You've you, you I've got the there was a brand there, there was infrastructure, there was support. Um, and there was a model that that had been used and and was proven to work. So so for me, you know, I was quite happy in running the business, but I just you know I needed I needed that support that Easy Business gave me. Um, what I found then when I joined was was better than perhaps I imagined based on my experiences in the past. Um, the support right from the start was superb. I I, I went and attended the training. That was good. Um, but it's like anything you go through training and and sometimes it, it leaves as many questions as, as as you get answers because as you, as you come away and you, you you're faced with well now i've got to apply that um you, you know the, the beauty was that the, the support was still there um and support that i use to this day um when i'm building apps I, I pretty much know the platform inside out, but uh, you know the the amount of emails I send in to support saying, "No, me again. This is probably a harebrained question. Can you help?" And uh, you, you know, and they'll come up with a solution or perhaps an angle that I haven't seen or point me in the right direction. It's you know, so from, right from the start, four and a half years ago to where I am today, 
everything has been you know has exceeded my expectations you know the 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 services have been enhanced they're, they're increasing all the time and the support has just been absolutely fantastic so um it's been brilliant it really has it's really good to hear that and it'd be great to get some insight into some of the specific businesses that you're dealing with at the moment I well, when I took on the franchise, I, I was expecting to be selling apps to uh, you know restaurants and takeaways with food ordering and digital loyalty, and um, and, I, and I found that's not been the business that I've written, uh, and it hasn't been that I've avoided chasing that business. It's just been, you know, I, I started off by talking to everybody and telling people what I was doing, and 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 then really understanding the the capabilities of the uh, you, you know of the CMS, and. I do a lot of what I refer to as internal apps. So recently, the most recent app that I that I built is actually um, for an HR company and published it just last week. And theirs is actually a customer facing app, but they have, well, they told me they had um, a 10 question audit that they go through with each client to decide whether they need um, HR advice, um, and you know what specific advice they, they needed it, it turned out to be a 41 question audit um but we built that we've in, we've we've launched the app and now they're using that and that's the way that they go about um winning new customers um the the other things that i do 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 a lot with schools now um but perhaps one of the ones that's been the most successful that's been going on for a few years is um some apps i've done for civil engineering companies and their their problem, the first one when they approached me, they were they'd won a contract to survey manholes for a um, for a telecoms company, and the guys were going out to sites and they were going to these manholes. They were filling in a spreadsheet with a number of questions and taking six specific photos, and it was taking them ages, and it was a nightmare uploading the photos in the right order. So they asked me to build it into an app, and and I did that. It was a very very quick app to build. We published it, um, you know, that virtually two days after I, I spoke to them, which is unusual. It's not usually that quick. Um, and the, within a couple of days, I was getting calls from the the surveyors saying, "This is brilliant. We're, we're now we're we're now filling in twenty or thirty of these a day, as opposed to three or four. And and that app has then expanded. So they've got probably 30 different forms that they fill in when they go to site. So it can be health and safety forms. It can be just specific photos of sites before the work starts, after the work ends. Um, and, and it's been really, really successful. And the beauty of it is it's so ingrained in their business that, uh, that they'll, they'll have it forever in a day. And, and when we look at that, and when I'm showing that app and explaining it to other companies, we can really show a return on investment because we can quite simply look at the number of these forms that they're completing on a daily basis, put a put a you know look at the time saving on that, put a um, a pound hourly rate value on it, and it and it shows that these apps pay for themselves within a month. It, it, it's it's phenomenal. So they that's that's the type of app I do quite a lot um, in terms of taking paper forms and and making them digital. And I'm doing that with schools at the moment and and all sorts of businesses. So I'm a parent. I've got a two and a half year old and a six year old who's in school. And I was really curious as to what features you would include within an app for a school. Uh, in my opinion, anything that could help with communication would be a good thing. Uh, what sort of apps are you building for schools? Well, well, two um, primarily. And what happened was um, I went into a, into a local school and they wanted a website and um and that website took a year to publish. It was only published about a month ago, <laughs> but it, but with schools that become a project. But at the time, I, I just discussed other things that I that I do, and I said, "Look, I've got this great idea for an app for a school, and it's based on my experience of having uh, boys that uh, it was when they went to secondary school, um, you, you know, about ten years ago. And and what happened was communication came home sometimes as a as a paper letter." Sometimes it was an email address, an email sent to my wife's email address because she was the main contact on the uh, on their account. And sometimes the email would come to me because I'd subscribed to uh, a, a mailing list. And, and what happened was my wife had just assumed that I had emails and things were getting missed. And I didn't know what systems I had to sign up for, for reporting and for, for paying for school dinners. 
So I, I built this demo app for this local school and said, what about this? When a new parent comes in, you have a little meeting with them and you tell them, you give them lots of information and they go away and they forget most of it. But how about when they come in, you say, right, get your phone out and scan this QR code. And everything we talk about today is going to be on the app that that downloads. And it'll be a step-by-step -step process to say, number one, to pay for school dinners, download parent pay or whatever system they're using. Number two, to, to get the, the, the reporting, download it might be an app or log on to a website. Um, here's where you buy your school uniform with a link to uh, to the school uniform supplier and all the all the things that parents need immediately when their child starts school. And the school said, that's brilliant. Um, leave it with us. And a week later, they rang me and they said, right, you know that app? Well, we want it, but it's become a bit of a project. But we really want an app for our staff, which was another conversation I'd had with them about the type of apps that I do. So we launched that um, a couple of weeks later, and that app has all the school policies. Um, so you know, particularly new teachers can come in. They have to read a number of policies. They have to sign them to say they've read them. So we've digitized all that and put it into an app. We've put their well-being information because they're very, very big on, on staff well-being now. So they've got you know, helplines and, and and lots of valuable information there for them. We've got some staff chat facilities so they can chat with other teachers, perhaps in their year group or or overall with the overall school and, and all the school, you know, policies, forms they fill in. So if they want maintenance in the classroom, they just complete a form on the app and that uh, pings a, a message to the to the maintenance team. And 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 that has been one that now we're showing it to other schools, and and I get introduced to schools by other people that sell to schools, um, who also want to be featured in these apps. By the way, so one is um, a stationary supplier who supply a number of schools. So if they've got a button in the app, it means all the staff will will order from the right place and order from them. Um, and so we're, so I'm talking to a number of schools at the moment about exactly that solution but also about the the initial solution, which they, they all want, but it's perhaps one for, you know, towards the end of the year, ready for the following September. So um, there's, there's two options there. Um, and, uh, you, you know, it's, it's getting quite exciting with the number of schools that want to want to talk to me about them. That's really interesting. And one of the things you've mentioned there is almost like, like the power of referrals, doing well for one client, such as a school, by solving a tough problem that impacts not just the school, but also parents, students, teachers, and then being recommended to other businesses. Can you share any other marketing strategies um, that you would use to find new customers? Or maybe even think about how you would break into a new industry or market? Absolutely. Uh, for me, it's all about networking, referral, you know, word of mouth. And that takes time. You have to build that up. So at the very start, uh, back four and a half years ago, I literally went out to everyone I knew and taught them what I did and and and, and told them to go and talk to their customers about it. Um, and then I had some friends with, with with businesses, so I built apps for them. And, uh, you know, so I had some some apps to show people. But what I like to do is is very much if I if I sell an app to a type of business, I look at other businesses the, the same. And, and in fact, I had a meeting yesterday. I, I um, there's a gentleman who goes to my my weekly networking group and he runs a, an independent car garage. And he, you listened to one of my presentations, said, I, I want one of those. I want an app for, for my business. Um, we haven't published it. We're publishing it next week, I think. Um, but it's it's built. And it, what he wanted in there was the ability for people to book, you know, for MOTs, for servicing, which he already had on his website. So we've we've literally linked the website in there. But he wanted a way of rewarding you know, his, his customers and, and building that that loyalty. So we've put a nice little digital loyalty scheme in. While I was building the app, I, I, as I always do, I looked on his website. I looked at who built his website and uh, found the name of the company. It's a local company. They're not they're about five miles away from me. And it turns out all they do is build websites for garages. So I met with the MD literally yesterday. I had a great meeting. Turns out he's got 468 garage customers. He's signing up another eight every month. And, and that's all he does. And so the conversation was along the lines of, well, look, 
why don't we work together? You introduce my apps and we'll we'll share the revenue. And uh, and that's gone very well. So he's meeting with, the, there's two other directors in the business. And, uh, you know, I'm quite hopeful that that will that will lead to, to increased business. And, and I do that with a number of businesses. So the schools, for example, the stationary supplier is introducing me to their schools. They've introduced me to a school uniform supplier who's who's introducing me to his schools and and it's always what i always like to do is see if there are other companies selling into the same space that i want to sell into and then form a, a relationship with them and, and and share a bit of commission and a bit of the revenue and uh, that usually uh, usually works <laughs> So it seems like that networking arrangement is working out fantastically well for you. Um, Over the last 18 months, we've heavily invested in helping our partners find new customers. And two of our biggest launches have been the Marketing Hub, uh, where we're now hosting all of our marketing content, uh, and the Sales Centre, which essentially is an advanced CRM system that our partners can use to reach out to businesses and run reports on them. Have you been using either of these solutions at all to help you operate the business? Yeah, um, yeah, yes and no, I suppose, is the answer to that one. Um, yes, I do. When they were launched, I used them quite a lot. I use them now quite, I suppose I'm at a different part of my journey to a new business. So if I was a new partner, that would be the way I would go about getting my business. What I've done is I've been a bit more selective. So when I'm... I, I, because I get a lot of business by referral and, you know, I'm introducing to, to a lot of companies and I've been doing a lot with schools and doctors, funnily enough, who, who, who you know, a, a different marketplace, I suppose. It's not quite the same. I, uh, I, what I've done is whenever I, I meet with a new business, so the garage, for example, that, uh, that I've done the app for, I go onto the sales center and I, I run the report. And the beauty of that is it's a really, really good document that you can sit and you can have a proper conversation with with a business about and it tends to lead to 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 maybe the business that you were going to win but it makes it easier to win that business but it also leads on to 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 additional business when it first came out i started running reports for businesses i knew and i won quite a few apps off the back of businesses that I already knew, you know, that, that went to my networking group. Um, I, I I ran the reports there and it did lead to uh, to, to new sales of, of apps quite quickly. Um, but uh, as I say, the way I run my business, it's not something that I use to generate business. I use it to perhaps strengthen the argument for winning the business that I'm, that I'm about to talk to them about. So it's very much about using the snapshot report as a conversation tool to help increase the likelihood of someone coming over the line and buying uh, buying a product. Could you give me some insight as to where that snapshot report sits in your sales process? It it, it does vary. Uh, it, it really does. Um, what I what I what I try and do is is when I when I meet with a client, it, it's. I, I ask lots of questions. I like to know about the business, um, you know, what the challenges are, and 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 it, and, it, and it varies, you know, meeting to meeting. I I, I have quite a natural conversation with people that, uh, you know, to get to know them, to build a bit of rapport, and if I spot something in the conversation, you, you know, which is probably what I preempted in the first place, then then I will go on and sell an app or a website, and then. If if at the end of that meeting I haven't presented the report already, I will get it out and show them and say, "Look, let's talk about this. This is something a little bit different. I want to talk to you about this. I'll, I'm going to quickly run through it. I'll let you go and read it, and then when we sit down in a week's time, we'll go into it in a bit more depth. So you use it then, and then you can see people's eyes opening up. Sometimes, if it's going to be a Zoom call that that I'm having as a, as the first meeting, I will have set up the meeting on Zoom, and then I will fire them the report the next day before them so they've got a chance to read it before the meeting and it's great to get some of the feedback on that um you know i had one with the the hr company was a classic example um she came straight back to me and said we're really rubbish aren't we and i said well actually um you, you know you're not in all areas but let's have a conversation about it and uh you, you know so there's been now a conversation about her social media and and how we can help her with with, with that and in fact i've got another call with them coming up in uh, in the next couple of days um so uh, you know with some clients if, if it's 
if I don't feel that, you know, sometimes you go into a meeting and it's, they're not all as, you know, open and friendly as others. So that's something that I'll bring out early on in the meeting and say, look, let's have a look at this. And I can highlight some areas and, and it can show you the type of things we can do to really give you some value from, from the conversation today. Um, and then, you, you know, when, when they start looking at that, then I can steer it in the direction that I want. But it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic report. I love the bit about um, Google reviews. That's the thing that I really push and push and push about Google reviews because you, you're giving someone some value there. And if you're showing them, and I've got um, I've got some examples of how Google reviews have really helped a business. Uh, and, it, and it was um, it was a local karate club and their, their address was wrong on Google. They were based in Weatherby and they didn't show in the top three karate clubs in Weatherby. So we've got their address corrected. Um, didn't have any reviews we took them from zero reviews to 20 reviews in, in a matter of a few weeks and all of a sudden they're the number one karate club in Weatherby and uh, you know they're, they're getting more and more people coming through the door this was this was this this was about 18 months two years ago and they've stayed in that position so when I talk to people about Google reviews I can also bring out some screenshots of their position on Google before and after and explain just how important Google reviews is and people get that and, and you start to give them some real value and, and as, as part of the conversation that you're having with them. And then they tend to listen to everything else you want to talk about. And uh, of course, there's ways we can help them with Google, but what you know, what what I, I'm probably really pushing for is to sell them an app or a, or a website. Excellent. Sometimes I think you just need to make these few little small tweaks to a local business and it can really make a massive difference because they're not competing against 100 karate clubs in the London area. There's only a handful of them. So getting the right information, getting the right reviews is absolutely critical. One of the questions that I get asked by people who are considering joining the Easy Business Network is about the earning potential of the business. I wondered if you could give me some information uh, or some insight as to how much you would charge for these solutions. Do you go to market at a flat fee or does the price vary? It's, well, it's how long is a piece of string, I suppose, is the answer to that, to that one. I, I I go anywhere from, well, there's two fees, obviously, that, that I ask people for, a build fee, um, which they pay up front or, you know, as the app's built, and, and an ongoing monthly fee, which covers support and hosting and maintenance and everything that goes with that. So the build fee, I'm anywhere between zero and the most I've charged is just under £3,000. Um, typically, uh, I'm, you know, 1500 to, to 2000 but there's reasons why sometimes I do an app for for zero, and it and it could be you, you know to to break into a market. So you, you, you know I'm I'm really keen on getting an app. So so for this for a school, for example, although I didn't do the schools one for for zero, I did it for a low cost because I wanted to get into a school. I could see an opportunity there. I could see that if I had his live school, there would be a real opportunity to to expand that in other schools. But I still charge um, a monthly fee, a reasonable monthly fee. So if I there's a, there's a payoff. If I if I go lower on the build, I'll go higher generally on the monthly fee. Or you know, for, for that industry, schools they're not huge margins. I tend to charge them termly rather than monthly because that fits with them. But uh, you, you know, I'm quite happy to take a bit of a risk sometimes. So I've got uh, one one app that I did, and it was it's through another company who sell to doctors' practices, and we've got this app that we've had going for about two two or three years now, and it's all their CPD information, so lots of videos, lots of information that the staff are using for the you know for the training and and contact. But the lady that I do that with is, is building a platform um, for this new solution that she's going to be selling into uh, the, the primary care networks. And the conversation I've been having was going been going on 18 months now, and she's getting very, very close to launching this. And the conversation I've had is, look, they all need when you when they sign up for your platform, they also need an app and you need to supply an app to each one. And she agrees with me on that. So she's got at the moment 150 of these primary care networks who said they want her solution. And that happened very, very quickly. Um, as soon as they saw what she was doing, she demonstrated it to some and they all want it. 
Now, for me, if I went to her and said, well, those 150 apps are going to cost you £1,500 each or £2,000 each and £99 a month, it, it, it would kill it. So I'm quite happy to charge a fee to get the app right in the first place. And these apps are all going to be pretty much identical, just with slightly different, just different branding for each customer. So they're not it's not something that I'm going to have to start from scratch and understand what's needed and, and really understand how to build it. I'm, I'll be following a pattern. So I'm doing those for her for, for zero up front and then charging a monthly fee. And that monthly fee will just be passed on to the customer. So we're, we're still still discussing what that's going to be. But but if there's 150 of them, it's worth that risk. So, uh, so because And it might not come off, but it, it looks like it's, it's getting close. So... Uh, you know, and that's why I would perhaps do one, you know, for, for very little up front because I know ultimately the ongoing is going to cost. And I won't have that sales process that I've got to fund and all the, you know, the time that goes into building an app. It's not just building it. It's the time finding that business, sitting with the customer, understanding what they want. That's all gone. It's, um, it's, so, it's so sometimes it is worth taking a bit of a risk on them. Definitely. And I think it all comes down to the total revenue per customer anyway. If you've got 150 apps earning a decent monthly fee and you are to waive the building fee for one, it makes economic sense due to the overall income from the other apps. Could you give me any examples of the inverse of that? Uh, so where you've charged a top rate to a business and where it's made sense to go out at that higher price point? Yeah, absolutely. If if I'm talking to a business and it's well, most businesses, you know, that's the starting point that um, you, you know if they want an app. Generally, if they want it on the app stores, so there's a bit more work. We know we've got to go through the Apple process, um, but if they want them on the app stores, that it's there for a purpose, and it generally is something like they might want some e-commerce in there, and then that app might have a lot more content that needs adding. So, of course, content means time. And most of the clients don't want to do it themselves. Um, and I, I steer them away from, from, from doing much of the work themselves because what happens is I'll end up with as many questions and time taken to explain things to them. So I might as well do it myself. So if I'm building an app and there's got to be a lot of content adding, then I will start at a, at a higher fee. The, the, the highest I charged was one that... The, the, the customer wanted all their internal um, manuals and data sheets added into it. Um, so they sent me a folder over and, I, and it came over on a Friday night and we'd already agreed that they were going to have this app and we'd agreed roughly what the, the figures were going to be. And then I opened this folder and there was a subfolder and there was a subfolder and there was lots and it, there was 400 <laughs> documents they wanted adding onto their app. So, so I said to them, look, you know, that's going to take time uh, and, and we pushed the fee up a little bit. And they were quite happy to pay that. Uh, it, it wasn't an issue and they understood what was involved. Funnily enough, recently uh, I've done another app for a similar company and they wanted to do very, very similar thing. And what I said to them was they, they had about 100 suppliers. Each supplier had their own data sheets. And I said, okay, for what you're paying me, I'll add the suppliers on, you add the data sheets. And, and that's what happened. <laughs> you know, and I should, because it's quite monotonous doing that. So, you know, theirs wasn't quite as high, but, it, it, you know, I charged to cover cover my time. And, and I'm really open with people. And I just say, look, you know, the starting point is around the £2,000 mark for what you're looking for. But let's look at the content because, as you understand, all these things take time and, and I have to charge a bit more for that. And, and if, you're, if you're honest with people and explain it to them, they don't have an issue, especially if you've done it right in the first place and you've sold them the return on investment. So they know ultimately what that app is going to do for the business. So is it going to save them time? Usually that's a, that's a big driver. Is it going to drive more revenue? You know, so, you know, getting bums on seats or, you know, rewarding customers or, you know, you know getting people to sign up for promotions, whatever it is. If you do that bit right, the, the the pricing bit just takes care of itself. It really does. That's really interesting. And coming from a business background where you've worked in business development, you've run a franchise prior to joining Easy Business as well. Could you give us some insight as to how well the business is doing financially as a whole? Yeah, yeah. Without going into all the figures, 
the 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 recurring revenue and and that's the bit that excites me about this business um in telecoms it's a recurring revenue model and it builds value and and when i saw this that's that's the bit that really excited me so the recurring me- revenue comfortably covers my business costs and did quite early on and obviously leaves a bit for for, for myself but but to me that that sort of de-risks the whole business and you can do that very very quickly because this is a this is a low cost you know revenue business to to set up um and as long as you, you you sell a few apps you're quite quickly into that your costs are covered and and then everything's profit and growth and okay the costs go up as the business grows that's natural but it becomes very easy to forecast and very easy to and i forecast three years ahead so i always know you know, where i am today where i'm aiming to be and that all my costs are covered and you know the money in the bank will cover the uh the revenue for the business for i think i'm covered now till end of january comfortably with what's sat there and obviously everything else just pushes that time scale out and grows it and grows it and grows it so so the business is 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 doing well it's like everything you always want more and more and more um but it but it works for me and um and it gives me the flexibility that i want as well that uh you know excuse me the uh when i had a bigger business i was tied to that business you, you know every day where with this if i want to i always go for a walk in the morning but if i want to go for a walk an hour later i'll go for a walk and then i'll i'll work later and but i know that everything's there everything's working everything's ticking over the money's coming in via go cardless so uh, you know sometime in the next couple of days uh, um uh, that some money will hit the bank from last month's invoices that go out automatically. Um, it's, it's a nice, easy business to run, and I say it's very, very quick return, especially covering covering all the costs. It's really great to get that insight into the financial model. It's also great to learn how the model has impacted you personally as well. It is, in fact, a really important thing to consider when launching a new business. And this leads me on to my last question. Would you happen to have any advice for people who are considering either joining the Easy Business Network or launching this type of business? Yeah, a few bits of advice, really. Uh, the first one is do it. Um, and, 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 and I do speak to potential new franchises sometimes. That's all what I always tell them. And, 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 I, and I tell them that based on my experiences and, and the, the wonderful support that I've had, which, you know, and I can't sing uh, Easy Business's praises enough. Um, but there's there's two things. There's the running the business side of things. So make sure you get some advice off an accountant. They 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 build your business plan or you build it with with their help. That you understand cash flow and uh, and and those things. And, that, and that's not difficult. It's not a great deal of work, but it just m- makes it makes it easy if you're forecasting and knowing that the business is is going the right direction. The other thing that I would say is understand the 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 the, the CMS and the, the platform, uh, you, you know. And I, when I say that, I don't mean understand how to build every feature to really to the you know as as, as I'm going to right. I'll just pause there. I know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so understand the, uh, the 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 platform but don't necessarily understand every feature and exactly how to build it because some of them have um a little bit more in the settings that you need to set up um so say the say one of the e-commerce um features there's a little bit that you need to do setting up the vat that type of thing it's not difficult so you don't really have to understand that really in depth because there's so much help information there and a team of support people that will help you with it, any little bits. But sort of understand the general capabilities of the platform because it can do so much. And, and if you understand that, then you can understand how you can go to pretty much any business and find an opportunity. Um, so once you understand that, the next thing is talk to as many people as possible. I'm a big uh, advocate of going to networking groups. I, I just think... And if you get a good one, I go to one and it's taken me a little while to find it, but I've been going for about two and a half, three years, maybe now. And they're like-minded people. They're the business owners, pretty much all of them. And that's one of the stipulations with the group. It's not a high pressure group, but everyone's got everyone's back and 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 will introduce you, you know you to, to other people. But I think 
to get to that level of trust within a group, you've got to go a few times. You've got to commit to the group. Um, so, so yeah, I would say make sure you're networking and, and, and just enjoy it and just get out there and be enthusiastic about what you're doing because it is this really is something that you can be enthusiastic about. And the, there's not loads of competitors out there. There might be a few more if, you, if you're concentrating on websites, but there's plenty of people that need websites. But when it comes to apps, the comp competition tends to be people charging tens of thousands of pounds and building completely bespoke apps. And that might work for 5% of the people you talk to. But for the other 95%, we've got something here that, that can really fit their business and fit their budget and really enhance the business. So, you know, get out there, talk to people and, and be really enthusiastic about it and, uh, and it'll work. Neil, thank you so much for giving up all your time today and answering my questions. I believe this interview will be valuable for both partners and those people thinking about joining the network. It seems like you have a lot of exciting projects happening right now, and I look forward to hearing about your future successes. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Anytime. Thank you.